Do you believe in God? No, I don't. Uh, they use God. I mean, they've used uh, religion to burn women. They use uh, religion to have discrimination, caste system. I I'm against organized religion. Panakam, this is Kanimori for Brute. Lok Sabha MP from Tuti Corin, uh, daughter of Karunanidhi, uh, sister of the current uh, Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, M.K. Stalin, uh, Kani Mori, thank you so much for speaking to Brood today. I want to start by asking you, uh, do you believe in God? No, I don't. I uh, do not believe that, uh, you know, there is some power uh, out there which is, you know, overseeing this world and uh, it has a uh, form uh, that, uh, power or person uh, has the, these uh, rules of, by which you have to live life and uh, and if I am wrong and if uh, there is something I really don't think that I would be able to worship a god uh, uh, who says you know this set of uh, rules are superior to another and so you can hate each other and you can clash with each other and uh, would I really want uh, a God uh, who creates hate, who creates misunderstandings and uh, who says women are inferior and you know things like that. So I am against organized religion and uh, I do not believe in you know what they call as uh, God in that way so that and uh, I think uh, what society and what people want has to keep evolving and changing. You can't keep pulling humanity back uh, saying that you know there is uh, this is the way you're supposed to live. They use God I mean they've used uh, religion to burn women saying they were witches, they've used uh, religion to push women into the fire and say, and they use uh, religion to have discrimination, caste system, uh, they've uh, used religion to have wars. So I, I am not able to accept that uh, something like this is for the greater good of humanity. So I find it very difficult and I think, uh, my strength comes from uh, within me and I do not have need something to lean on. I mean, it's difficult at times when uh, it's easier to believe that there is somebody you can appeal to when you are in trouble or you have issues and who can suddenly find, uh, you know, light up your path and say this is the way to go. But I think uh, it's easier for me to find, I can be sure uh, that I will at least do my best to find my way than depend on somebody else for that. So since the DMK is largely perceived to be atheist and of course, uh, you know, largely perceived to be that, um, do you think this has given BJP, which is perceived to be a Hindu uh, party, uh, do you think it's given it uh, a sort of uh, an inroad into Tamil Nadu? See, uh, DMK, there are many leaders in DMK who are atheists and there are many leaders in DMK and many uh, people in DMK who are not atheists, who yeah. belong to some religion. So uh, I don't think uh, DMK as such is uh, against religion or uh, does not believe in God. Uh, you have to understand that uh, the Dravida uh, Karagam started by Periyar. Uh, is a different uh, move, uh, party and it's not a political party as such and it's a different movement and DMK is a political party and they said there is one God and uh, of course uh, our founding leader Anna said that you know I uh, find God in the smile of the poor yes. so uh, that is uh, what uh, but they did not work against, uh, I mean, they did not say we did not believe in religion or we are doing away with religion or anything like that. And it is a Dravidian movement, not the DMK, which uh, started the Hindu Endowment Board. And uh, I think we've never, every time the DMK has been in power, we've never failed from our responsibility as a government to take care of the temples or, uh, you know, uh, have the Kumbhabhishekams or whatever has to be done and to protect, uh, you know, the temple properties and everything. 
It's interesting, you know, all the points that you just mentioned. How do you combat the BJP uh, when it, uh, you know, in the public domain, it has said that Dravidian politics and DMK are anti-God. Uh, do you, you know, how are you combating that uh, in the political space? Um, and especially again, I mean, I'd, I'd, I'd say uh, because it's the BJP is perceived to be a largely Hindu uh, party, um, you know, what do you think politically in terms of inroads in Tamil Nadu, has it had any effect uh, on, on this particular uh, See, line? Uh, my father, has uh, Karunanidhi, has been uh, uh, the Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, voted as Tam to become the Ta Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu five times. Right. And uh, he is a known, uh, proclaimed atheist. And uh, I don't think that has affected because it is only when he was a chief minister that uh, even in his own native place, uh, we have the temple car called in the Tirvaru temple. Mm -hmm. And it is only during his government that uh, after so many years, the temple car uh, festival was conducted again. I mean, they, they uh, redid the uh, temple car and, and we've done so many Kumbhabhishegams and uh, even now in my own constituency, uh, so much work is uh, happening in the Tiruchindur temple, it's a Murugan temple and which was neglected for so many years, mm -hmm. you know, when so-called believers were uh, in power and uh, uh, nobody bothered to take care of those temples. It's only um, the DMK government. So, we understand that we are a government. What my personal belief cannot come in the way of uh, the responsibilities of the government. The DMK has been very clear about it. When the Hindu Endowment Board is under the government, mm -hmm. then definitely uh, we have a responsibility to the people who come to those temples, who worship in those temples, to give them the best, to give them, uh, you know, the best uh, uh, facilities and, uh, you know, and take care of the temples. Temples is, uh, brings me to my next question that I wanted to ask you on, which is free the temple movement. How is the DMK uh, combating that? How are you looking at it? Uh, free the temple, uh, free the temple movement. How, how is the DMK looking at that? Free from what? Uh, and give it to whom? That is my question. Yes, you, you want to take away the temples from the Hindu German board or the government and give it to whom? You know, it'll go, it'll get into, you know, hands of uh, some people and they will start exploiting and then again, why was it taken away? Why was it taken away from people and, you know, why did the government uh, uh, take charge? And it was not the DMK government it, which did it, it was done before that. And why was it done? Because there was corruption, there was, uh, uh, you know, uh, the temple properties were being taken away. And only after the government started taking charge that uh, there is, um, you know, uh, you know, how much income is there. We have um, an understanding and it's in public domain that the income of the temple, the jewellery which is there in the temple, the properties of the temple, it is coming into a public domain only after that. So, uh, when you take it away from the government, where is the accountability and give it to whom? Uh, you, you don't think that in the current scenario, the perception and, and we're talking about free the temple movement, of course, across, uh, across India, you don't think that there is a perception at this point in time that there is corruption uh, or there is, uh, you know, a question mark in terms of the amount of mo money which is coming in um, and how best to combat it, is it best to not have it under the government? When it is under the government, there is, um, I'm not saying they can, there is no corruption or I, I'm not, uh, uh, saying that there can be no mistakes so that nothing is going wrong. We are working towards it and obviously that is the uh, what is expected. I mean maybe I, I, I'm not the one to talk about it but at least there is some accountability. We can ask questions and I think uh, if you have an uh, if you put an RTI you are uh, the government is answerable. Right. But uh, if you give it to private people then uh, what happens? Who is going to answer? Where is the accountability? Okay. Uh, and f I think first let us free the temple from the hands of a few people. 
you know a few communities i think everybody should be allowed to uh, enter the temple everybody should be allowed to become pujaris over there everybody should be allowed to go into the sanctum sanctorum first let us free the temples of all caste system and discrimination then we can talk about freeing it in other ways all right um, i'm just going to ask you this uh, one quick time and we'll move on to another subject uh, um, you know what do you have to say today to the bjp when they say that they have uh, made inroads into tamil nadu uh, do you do you agree is, is that a concern uh, for the dmk at this point in time see who's made inroads and who has not uh, will be reflected in the elections and uh, let us wait for the election and i don't think i mean this is a democracy and uh, everybody can you know get into politics everybody can come with their own ideology and philosophy and try to talk to people about it uh, you can't say stop that i mean it's it's not right to do that so and i'm not worried i know uh, tamil nadu and uh, i think uh, we don't i think uh, in tamil nadu people care about development about uh, human dignity self respect and uh, uh, social justice more than anything else okay elections will tell um, as we move on um, there's been uh, you know the current parliament session the monsoon session uh, there's a lot of back and forth that uh, we've seen you have with Nir uh, nirmala sitaraman the finance minister uh, and first we'll talk a little bit about that and we'll go into some topics that you have raised in the par uh, parliament in this session um, uh, so we'll come to the price rise and the gst bit uh, the fm did say that uh, you know that dmk is using the gst and adding more Uh, on top of it, uh, they've not sort of you know she she took uh, uh, she explained say a packet of curd. She said you know if it costs with GST 105, uh, it's 120 uh, that the DMK government is selling. See the time and again the finance minister of Tamil Nadu has clarified that uh, uh, he uh, it cannot uh, the gast uh, union government cannot say that uh, they have been party to everything. Uh, and he he's made it very very clear so you cannot say that everybody unanimously accepted everything mm. so that is one uh, thing we i i would like to clarify could you elaborate on that when we, you say that you know the finance minister uh, in tamil nadu has said that unanimously it was not agreed no, on yeah many things like everything they say that we were agreed on or um, I, I, he's been very clear in his interviews that uh, sometimes they are not there not everybody is there not everybody is on board uh, about, uh, when some decision is taken and not all decisions are taken unanimously the next thing i would like to say is when dmk uh, uh, after we've come to power in within a year we promised to reduce the prices of petrol and diesel and we've reduced the price of petrol so it is not that we ran away from our election promise we have prom uh, delivered and we are delivering on all our election promises and you've been in government twice as a second term and we're going for the uh, election after the second term of bjp uh, government then it's in tamil nadu we've just come to power and we are uh, fulfilling our election promises and i think the entire debate was not about what the dmk is doing there uh, the debate is about nash it's an, a debate in the parliament about what is happening in the entire country right. so we can't uh, you know go back and say what are you doing what is this state doing what is that state doing is that is not the answer and we all know that there are issues with the gst so uh, no point throwing back questions at me i we are having this debate in parliament to have answers from the finance minister of india hmm uh, i am not here to debate about what the state government uh, does so we we have to understand that and when even when i read out the letter written by a child to the prime minister uh, i am not say she, she um, the finance minister told uh, answer the parliament saying that we did not increase uh, the prices on pencil or on the eraser it is not that the uh, price rise the price hike about uh, in everything is so high that people cannot afford to buy things 
like pencils or uh, you know school children can't afford to buy things the parents can't buy, afford to buy things for the children who go to school that is what the child means it's not that the prices of pencils have become uh, you know that is not the answer we expect we answer expect a holistic answer so but that is was not coming i wanted to ask you quickly um, you know you've advocated equal representation of women in parliament uh, that's something you've been vocal about uh, how far have you been able to do that in the dmk and tell us a little bit about uh, you know even in the constitu constituency etc uh, what have you been able to do uh, around women's representation no in uh, tamil nadu we uh, especially in the local body election we have 50% uh, reservation for women and uh, one good thing is uh, women have uh, gone beyond the 50% now and okay. uh, uh, there are more women representatives compared to uh, men in the local bodies and we have uh, you know mayors uh, more mayors who are women than uh, men and um, the uh, we 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 do have uh, i think in the political scenario even uh, when you talk about the country uh, we do have to go even within political parties we have to go a long oh, way yes uh, definitely where we are is not uh, enough okay. even in the dmk uh, i think uh, we need more women to come into the party positions and uh, uh come into uh, you know our assemblies as representatives and uh, parliament so i 33% uh, reservation to start with will definitely go along way because in tamil nadu i mean we started uh, with 33% in local body elections and today we are more than 50% mm -hmm. and i think definitely that will you know uh, go a long way because it's much more difficult for women to get into politics because um, you know they they do not have assets you know under their control mm -hmm. and uh, it is difficult uh, for them to be accepted in um, in politics as equals so it, it come we need that push uh, to uh, open up uh, doors for them right so uh, so that is very important but and uh, in our party posts also within the party uh, we have a women's wing and uh, we ha have been pushing for more representation within the party structure and i think slowly things are changing very quickly i wanted to uh, ask you on uh, neet um uh, i know of course that uh, you know twice now the bill uh, bill has been passed by tamil nadu uh, to exempt uh, students from neet um the tamil nadu government previously in its previous avatars has also sent these uh, bills to the in, i think in 2017 had sent it obviously to the president uh, it was returned um tell us a little bit on why do you think this is very important um of, uh, in terms of exemption from neet Uh, and Tamil Nadu seems to be the most vocal advocate uh, for it, while we've seen other states like Maharashtra, etc., sort of put a pause on it at this time. In Tamil Nadu, um, we have uh, um, we no do not depend on private colleges alone, private medical colleges alone. We have uh, government medical colleges, and our Tamil Nadu government, uh, and especially when uh, DMK was in power and. um uh, my father was his chief minister his dream was to start one uh, government medical college in md district of tamil nadu so that um, you know people who never had or could never dream of an opportunity to become doctors can become doctors families uh, you know from less uh, children from less privileged and from uh, rural areas you know will be able to uh, get the opportunity to to become doctors and uh, uh, people from communities which have been deprived right. and uh, more women and minorities can also become doctors and that that was the reason behind uh, starting these government medical colleges and it's more affordable of course so uh, the whole thing is uh, centered on a better health system and also uh, social justice and uh, reservation so today with neet uh, our students are being deprived of uh, opportunities which uh, they should rightfully get 
you have an exam which uh, is completely out of the education system they are used to and uh, it's not that our doc i mean i think uh, doctors from tamil nadu are doing well all over the world and uh, uh, tamil nadu uh, our health system is uh, one of the best mm. and uh, even medical tourism is a uh, very important uh, part of uh, tamil nadu economy so uh, when uh, it, it the system is you know in its right place Uh, this is very disruptive to you know bring in some ex- entrance examination this entrance examination is like an elimination mm. it is not uh, you know giving opportunities to students who um, have been deprived and denied the opportunities because um, i mean who is able to go for a entrance coaching mm. uh, course uh you know it's it's a privilege uh, children and mostly it is students from uh, uh, you know cities mm. who are uh, able to afford it and who are uh, you know it's easier uh, for them to go to these classes so what happens to the rural students what happens to the underprivileged students so uh, there it it creates this uh, um entrance examination only creates discrimination again and it's denying opportunities to many students and of course um when we talk about the um, pg courses uh, we've always had marks uh, given to students who've worked in phcs uh, you know and in the government system so that is also being done away with so it's it's uh, a big uh, um, loss to the health system and to the experience which the students also will be gaining mm. so in many ways it affects our students and also health uh, health system the government's health system in um, the state you know when section 377 speaking on the supreme court bit had uh, they had struck it down uh, you had tweeted personal choices we make in our lives should not be dictated by law well done supreme court for this historic verdict uh, my question to you really is on the lgbtq uh, i community plus community uh, we've seen a lot of politicians in sort of you know they are personally champion the cause uh, many times but political parties rarely picking this up um uh, for the young viewers who are watching us uh, you know uh, how can politics be more inclusive uh, how, and what would it take for political parties to really come out and champion that, that is the whole thing about the dravidian movement it is all about inclusivity so uh, i think uh, democracy is a right to choose and democracy that is the fundamental of democracy you know that you have a right to choose and uh, uh you you have to be inclusive and i think tamil nadu was one of the first uh, uh, states to you know uh, recognize transgenders and to give them their rights and uh, um um look at their problems and understand that and uh, you know one of the first uh, states to support uh, you know so, uh, when they wanted to get the surgery is done through government uh, medical college uh, ho- hospitals right so uh, we have always been supportive mm. and I, i think we've always been inclusive and that is what we expect just uh, you know two quick last questions uh, i had um uh, one was on uh, you know there's been a debate in terms of uh, hindi versus tamil versus using uh, english in parliament um uh, you know uh, the other minister cabinet minister piyush goel uh, when he was speaking in hindi uh, there was a bit of back and forth in terms of uh, speaking in english and then you spoke in tamil as well um uh, and of course you know the pronunciation sometimes in terms of hindi words uh, that we've seen that's another thing in parliament that happened uh, tell us a little bit about the debate on hindi um you know versus uh, say uh, versus tamil do you think this is a debate that is uh, you know needs to be kept alive is is constantly alive or is it still a debate uh, at this point in time see it is not uh, hindi versus uh, anything it is uh, the Im- imposing something i mean it could be uh, any idea that is being imposed on people which is not right uh same thing you no know, language can be imposed on anybody it could be english it could be hindi it could be any uh, mandarin or anything you can bring and if you go to impose it on me and saying that uh, i have to learn this to be indian then i will oppose it 
I mean, it doesn't make uh, me less of a human or less of uh, Indian if I don't know English or uh, if I don't know Hindi. And um, I speak uh, my language and uh, uh, and our founder leader Anna said, uh, you know, if, uh, if I know English, then I can speak to the world, I can speak to the nation. Uh, and I, I speak in Tamil uh, within my state. So you don't have to open so many doors. Uh, you can open two doors. Why should I learn another language, a third language to spot, uh, you know, because you think uh, India can only be one because uh, you have, one, uh, I mean, you want to create one national language. And Hindi is not a uh, national language also. Hmm. India is a diverse country with, um, uh, you know, languages which are very ancient and which are very rich in uh, literature and, uh, you know, such beautiful uh, languages. Why do you have to impose one language and say everybody has to speak this and uh, only then India can be what it is. That is what is going to actually go against the grain of what India is and kill the beauty of it. All right, uh, many languages in India uh, to keep alive. Uh, my last question on a lighter note to you is, um, what do you and uh, Chief Minister, Minister Stalin as brother and sister disagree over? If you can give us a little bit of glimpse into, uh, you know, some things that you usually disagree over. He, I mean, he overworks. That's the only thing I can uh, disagree with him. Uh, he's my leader, so I agree with everything he does. Okay, alright. Thank you so much uh, for speaking to Brute today. Thank you.